Have you seen the new Canadian prepper video where he creates a ranking system to figure out how good of a prepper you are? It's idiotic. You know why? Because I didn't do very well. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Not waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video, it is high stakes, high drama, prepper versus prepper. There was a recent Canadian prepper video where he created this kind of ranking system, like a score and point system, to figure out how amazing or terrible of a prepper you are. And I'm gonna be watching that video. There's a video response to that uh, video that he created. I'm gonna be watching it, comparing myself to him and all of you. I'd highly recommend you guys check out his video. I'll put a link down in the description below where you can find out what your prepper score is and definitely let me know down in the comments below what you got. I don't think that this system's necessarily like a perfect system. I, like, I wonder if you took uh, like the, the, the Kung people from Africa, uh, Kung people from Africa and ran them through whether they get a perfect score because these are people that are literally, you know, living in a self-sufficient kind of way all the time anyway. But, uh, you know, I think it's interesting and it's a opportunity to kind of rank yourself and see where there are areas of improvement that you could make. So I think for that, it is a useful uh, system. So definitely share with me what you get as well. We're going to be watching it here in just a moment on this, this set that I created for a uh, YouTube channel that myself and my boy do together and <laughs> we uh, will sometimes play video games. If you want to check out our first uh, video on that channel, it was about building an ultimate uh, survival bunker in Minecraft. I'll put a link down in the description below to that video as well. But without any further blabbing on my part, we're going to start a Canadian Preppers video. Now, normally I watch him at double speed, but I think for this, we're just going to do it at normal speed so that I have plenty of opportunity to dump my uh, verbal diarrhea on you and River might get a chance to do the same. So we have it uh, set up on both these screens and we're going to do a countdown to start back, uh, start our playback in three, two, one, go. Did you ever ask yourself, given my current set of circumstances, how likely am I to survive the worst of worst case scenarios if it were to happen right now? Well, today on the channel, we're going to be sharing a system with you that we devised to help you self-assess and identify your... I really like Canadian Prepper's animation. He's got a great team that you know, just makes these videos look really, really clean and nice. I mean, it's not necessary for the information, but uh, it's fun. They do a really nice job of it. I think, these I think that AI. was, a, yeah, that's an AI thing. Yeah, it was AI video right there. A lot of us are starting to use that stuff. It's so easy and convenient. Just drop AI stuff in you ask for a specific thing and you can put some video motion in it. It's very useful. All right. This system that we're going to share with you today is the basis for a series of ongoing videos that we call Celebrity Survival Scores. Using this measurement tool, we've assessed the survivability of many different celebrities from Bill Gates. You know, it's funny, they, they've got Kim Kardashian. Yeah. In the, do you see like they had a, a symbol? Do the Kardashians have a symbol for themselves? You know what it reminds me of? Uh, can I get it? Did, I think, well, I it's, think. A, it's over on the bookshelf. Can you, get, can you grab that book over there, that Lord of the Rings? Tolkien make Where a Lord it? of the Rings black book right over there. Yeah. Yeah. Tolkien, he made a, uh, a symbol for himself. I'm not sure how much you can see. I'll put a graphic of it up on the screen. But this, this Tolkien symbol for his name that I guess maybe he signed things with, it reminds me of the Kardashian one. I, do they, uh, are they Lord of the Rings fans? And they, uh, they wanted to mimic his, uh, his little, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call that? It's like the prince symbol. It's like the the symbol instead of a name. Anyway, is it, that, that looks kind of like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This is a good, this is a good list. I like that they put networking in there because that may be more important than any of the other ones. The, the, your ability to network with other people and create a community. It's good. It, it, it was really good they put it in there. Okay, resources. resources first. One of the cardinal obsessions of preppers is how much food and resources they have stockpiled away. Let's rate this on a scale of We've zero of to 10. Yeah. If you have less than two weeks worth of food stored in your home at any given moment, you can check zero for this box. Okay, well, we on the more upper than end of the scale, if you have more than two years worth of food stored, that's roughly 1 million calories per year for every uh, member of your family. Then you I think we definitely have two years of food at least. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, all those grains and everything. Yeah, those giant jugs of grain. Yeah. I guess we're at 10 there. Okay, so I'm keeping track of my little book here. Creating factors to consider. What is the quality of your food? Are these high quality, nutrient dense foods, which are diverse yeah, in nature? In there. Then there you can give, hey, yeah, oh, give yourself a slightly higher score. Maybe give yourself an extra okay. point or two. Do you have an ample stockpile of things like medication, ammunition, we got more first aid than supplies? Most people, more that than most How much people. drinking well, water do you have on hand? Do you have a means of filtering oh, I it. that drinking water? The plenty of do water. Do you have different items that you can barter? These are yeah, we actually have a lot of food that I wouldn't eat, but we, <laughs> we've got it for bartering. So, yeah, I think we're, we're definitely a 10 on that one. we got a ton of that stuff. And the metals. Because I know you have a massive stash of stuff that's green and smelly and is probably yeah, going to be in high It's weird listening to Canadian Prepper at normal speed. I'm, I'm always doing him at, <laughs> at double speed. Listening to him like this, it just sounds like he's talking so slow. Mm. I can't talk while I'm listening to him. I said founds instead of sounds. In the center of a densely populated city with a population north of one million people, your baseline is going to be zero. Well, we're going to do pretty now, well here. Now, if you live in a suburb, in a moderately because we're out in the city, sticks, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Pros and cons to that: we got to drive anywhere to get groceries, but yeah, we're rural. Low population density. Yeah, not many people around here. Climate, you can give yourself a 10 it just takes 10. a while to get so anywhere to populated. Yeah. Like population density. Yeah, the only thing with our place is that our particular rural area, it's kind of vulnerable to um, like nuclear meltdowns and stuff because the, the East Coast got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of nuclear power plants. Oh, he's a guy. Could take a few points. Yeah, he's actually addressing it here, yeah. I'm going to give us an 8 for that, because we're out in the middle of nowhere, but, you know, the uh, the uh, nuclear power plants in my area are, you know, not, they're not going to be a problem during every kind of crisis, but in some crises, nuclear power plants could be a liability. So I'm going to give us an 8 on that one. Okay. Currently lives in a relative. <laughs> He's got the other guy still talking in the background. <laughs> That's clever. I like that. Like this guy, he, he doesn't have that kind of social sense of when uh, his time to talk is over. I like that number six. I don't The next dimension is gardening and your ability to. Okay, gardening for us. That's a weakness that we have. We got a lot of space and a lot of seeds, but. I've never felt I've been very good at it. Some gardening experience or some garden, you can give yourself a five out of ten. You might be five. If you have lots of gardening experience and you have yeah. a very large garden, yeah, we have lots of space, of but you know, you can give it's usually that I, I just I'm busy and I, I, I don't weed I don't weed enough, and you know, I've never really had a super successful garden. The sun chokes are one thing we've done really well with, but you know, the voles all ate them all over the last uh, last winter, so. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give us a five for that one. Yeah, because we're, we're middle of the road there. We could get better, though. I, I We could get to an eight pretty quick if, if we focused on it, though. Yeah, we get the we get the rain. We got lots of streams here. If we ever needed to, we could bucket water up. We're thinking about maybe moving a stream. What do you say? Seeds. Yeah, we got tons of seeds, but those only last for so long. People like buy these survival seed things and then like just throw them somewhere. Seeds only have a certain shelf life. You can extend it by freezing them though. You don't want them fluctuating in temperature though. Just get them at a cool temperature and keep them there. It is edible. Well, at least not in that way. Oh, here's a pot <laughs> reference, I guess. I knew what you're talking about. Is pot Wait, legal in Canada? Because he's actually a bit of know. a green thumb, we're going to cut him some slack here. I think it's legal in about like half the states here in the US. Seven out of ten. Yeah, I knew I was going to prove my old man wrong someday. Okay. The next dimension next? is hunting, hunting and animal and, husbandry. And animal husbandry. Now, it's all fine if you can grow your own vegetables. Unfortunately, you're going right. to be limited. Well, we don't do much hunting, but what do we have? Guns. Well, we, yeah, we have the guns, but raising your own livestock, though, what do we have? Chickens. We have chickens, yeah. Now, if you've never fished or hunted or have any animal husbandry experience, go ahead and give yourself a zero out of yeah, ten. We don't really hunt, but we've got the chickens hunting or fishing but maybe you don't actively the one thing with our chickens though is that all winter we're reliant on bags of food for them mm. you know so we're, we're connected to the 
the grid for feeding them during the winter. I'd like to f figure out how to collect food for them. I don't know. We're probably higher than a five, though, because the chickens were pretty good with those. Six? Yeah, let's just go six. A tick higher than five. And we have, we do have access to to woods where we could go hunting, but um, the reality, I, I think during any kind of emergency situation, if a lot of people start hunting, there's not going to be a lot of animals left. So maybe our voles from the garden would become our food source. I, I guess that's why all of our sunchokes are gone is because we became like animal husbands to all the voles. I was letting them eat the sunchokes because I didn't think they'd eat as many as they did. They ate almost all of them. Well, they don't have any meat, really any meat on them, after you get rid of all the fur. Yeah, there's not, there's not very much, yeah. You could maybe get, gut them and get the hair off and put them in a soup. Bowl soup? Yeah, I mean, you get what little meat's there off there. Sparrows, too. There's like almost nothing there. What do we got next? a very broad one and hard to quantify, and that is skills. Skills. Do you have Bruce any Gers? practical skills? That are going to be rooster skills no no roosters for food oh oh yeah yeah we could we could kill our own birds if we needed to okay so we're, we're talking about skills now medical practitioners i think i we're pretty good with that because you know I, I can definitely build houses and structures and things like yeah well during an emergency well yeah i guess yeah, during during an emergency yeah your programming could be useful you know for uh surveillance and everything but maybe is a bit of a diyer you make an attempt to fix things when you break down i don't know i'm not sure whether to go like middle of the road or, or all the way up I'm pretty good at building stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a ten on that because I can I can totally build. And people people need structures. And, and the thing is is uh, if there was ever a huge emergency, uh, most people's houses aren't up to the task. So they, you'd almost need everybody rebuilding their house. So I think someone with skills like mine and the experience to build a place like this, it might it might be useful to a lot of people. So I, I think I think I legitimize. 10 out of 10 on that one. And other artistic endeavors like that. So I'm actually going to give you a couple points in this category. We've got other skills too, but I think I think we're really strong in that one. And like you said, yeah, look at programming. That. That's art right there. Up next okay, is security. security. If you have no firearms training, you've never fired a gun in your life, you have no self-defense training, you've never been a combative role or a fight in your life. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to win a hand-to-hand -hand fight, but we do have we do have some security. You do have a firearms license. You might even own a gun, but you don't really have any comprehensive firearms training. Let's You've see. never taken a self-defense course, but maybe you hit the punching bag every once in a while. Go on and give yourself a five out of 10. Now, if you are somebody who has that comprehensive- I think that's probably where we belong. We've got plenty of weaponry and ammunition, but- You not, fired your gun and you've- Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm fairly good at firing uh, and uh, hitting the target, but- uh, So how about you give yourself a six because they said not particularly good. Yeah, but they, the more you learn, the more you know that you don't know. And there's a lot, there's a lot that I don't have. About four. Well, I, I think five is merited, but I wouldn't go any higher than a five security system give yourself another point if you have good fencing maybe you have a guard dog we have a, we have a good setup here in terms of defensiveness there are uh, there are choke points that people have to come through to get to our place that are, are defensible because you have an innate aversion to firearms and self-defense in general and you're a pacifist who doesn't believe one. in violence mm -hmm. unfortunately i think you're going to be a mark for marauders when the shit hits the fan oh darn all these things considered, Norman, I'm going to have to give you a 0 out of 10. Next up is next? physical fitness. Physical fitness. If you're a person who has chronic health issues, some debilitating ailment, or you're yeah. morbidly obese, then unfortunately, you're going to be a 0 out of 10 in this category. That doesn't mean you can't improve. That just means that's how it is right now. Well, I'm pretty fit, but uh, I push it too much, and I'm oftentimes injuring myself. I got, I re-injured my my ankle. I got it wrapped again. That's why I'm shooting a video today instead of outside doing work. I don't know. I'm gonna go with an eight on that because when it's working, it's working. But uh, I'm always I'm always injuring myself, pushing it too hard. I'm gonna go eight. Be as physically fit as a 20-year-old. So where does Norman fit on this scale? 
He is a millennial. As far as I know, he doesn't have any chronic health conditions. We know that he's probably not going to be able to run too far because of self-inflicted cardiovascular issues, we'll say. But on the whole... Uh, yeah, smoking is not a... Smoking is not a good habit. I actually think he could be physically fit. You know what? He actually has a similar build to somebody I know. Whoa, this is kind of trippy. Uh, are you my long-lost <laughs> brother, man? About. So we're going to go on and actually give them a 6 out of 10 in this category. You know, with all their, their special effects ability, they should put your network and community. put the two of them together because they can do that with their green screen. Okay, networking. This is important. We're really, we're pretty good with networking here. You know, because we're, we're kind of formal, we're kind of informal about it here. And it's not like we have prepper networks here up in New England so much. But uh, I live in a farming community and, you know, we know so many people that, like, if things ever went crazy here, you know, like with all the different people that live around us and we're friendly with them and they've got skills with, uh, you know, their goats and their chickens. Everybody's got chickens around here. Um, I think we're probably pretty good there, but yeah, I, I think we can, we can put a 10 for that. I, it's informal, but I think it would, uh, it would snap right in if it was ever needed. We're always trying to help each other out, which reminds me, I gotta, I gotta get in touch with Jeff. It's one of our neighbors. He wanted a hand with uh, milling some lumber and we get the lumber mill here. way to perhaps self-assess with community is to look at it this way. If you have more than 10 able-bodied people that you can trust with your life and with your family, then I would give yourself a 10 out of 10. If you can only trust five people, Give yourself Seven. a five. If you have nobody Seven. that you can trust who is able-bodied... I think a five. They said that if you only have five people. Well, there's other people that would be here if there was ever an emergency. I think it's a ten, though. Yeah, I, I think, we, I think we're good on that. I mean, some of them are older. Yeah, yeah, but again, skills. To get along with, yeah. fairly easygoing. I'm a chill dude, man but isn't really a part of a greater mutual assistance Again, group. I think it would be fun if they put them right next to each other mm. for this, although it makes the editing easier. They don't, have to, they don't have to work the timing, they can do all the timing in, in the edit. Number nine is mental health. Mental health. Now this is a difficult category yeah. to quantify. I would say that if you have a severe chemical dependency, be it I don't alcohol, think we have any of those issues. Maybe you have mm. some sort of so I guess, I presume 10 is the good one, so I, we're gonna go for 10. And unfortunately, you have to give yourself I am immune to despair. Now, if you've had some mental health issues in the past, maybe you have antibiotics. Oh, well, this isn't that kind. This is like uh, people that get depression and have trouble functioning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were somebody who's never had any mental health problems, never had any addiction problems. Oh, was that? Problems, was that the guy from Breaking Bad? No, probably not. This is just B-roll. <laughs> that guy looked like the the guy from uh, Breaking Bad. Give yourself a ten out of ten. Now, it's certainly not my place to diagnose or classify where you fit along the spectrum of mental health. This is going to be one of the most subjective dimensions for you to self-assess. So you're going to want to I think be it, honest. Well, yeah. I, I was going to say I think it's easy enough, but I guess people don't know what happens when things get really crazy. I think you've lied to by the government. Weed's not addictive at all. But in terms of the hierarchy of substance abuse, the green stuff isn't quite as bad as something like crystal meth or cocaine. And as far as I know, he doesn't have any major mental health issues. Yeah, I got a mind like a steel trap. The biggest strike against Norman is probably going to be his lack I of motivation. So for that reason, yeah. we're going to give you a two out of ten. Yeah, I am more of an ideas guy. You got me there. Last but not okay, least is one. finances and resourcefulness. Now, it's arguable uh, that not all we've got Yankee thrift here. are going to be weighted mm -hmm. as equally. And if you were to devise the perfect algorithm, it might weight these variables differently. I like the that he, he uh, paired finances with resourcefulness sure because uh, if you're resourceful, you don't really need as much in terms of finances. And if you have lots of finances, you don't have to be quite as resourceful. Uh, but uh, oh, he's losing his key in his hat there. He must add some, some bounce off the green screen. But I, I think, yeah, I mean, we're pretty good about being cheap and, you know, we go dumpster diving and, you know, make, make the best out of what we have. But we also, have, we've got money set back and, and metals set back. So I think we have all the resources that we need there. Who's a very high net worth individual. I'm talking north of $10 million. Back in the day, a millionaire used to mean something, which is why we set that bar so Seems high. Like you're going to make uh, millionaires be the uh, 10 out of 10. Over $10 million. Chances are you have the resources that you're going to need to get a really good 
head start. We're talking I think you can be 10 out of 10 without having a ton of money, though, if you know how to use the money that you have and you can find ways of getting things free. We get millions of dollars worth of free resources just by being aware that they're there for the taking. And also, people who have that much money are used to spending it for making other people do their job. So if other people know that if the person with a lot might ask them to build a bunker, yeah. they might go back there if they're stressed because they don't have one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we've got all the financial resources that we need. For a long time. He also doesn't have any debt because no credit card company would issue him a credit card. Actually, you know, you're right. The bank won't even give me a debit card. Would you believe that? If he was to get a job, it would likely be a low income job. I had to get a debit card the other day. Uh, someone that we're renting our house out to wanted to pay us through Cash App. And me being me, I was uh, amenable to that. But I had to get a debit card to transfer the stuff out of Cash App into my bank. Never had one before. Maybe if he gets more I think we're done. I think, what do we like, add these up, I think? Selling pots? I think I can do that. So normal C. Norman's survival score is 29 out of 100. And quite frankly, we were being... Hey, are you adding them up? So we got 40 here. We're going to group all these. 74. 74? Personally, I scored 74 out of 100. You tied him? Now this might seem low, and maybe in some cases I was a bit more conservative in my estimations. Now ideally you would be scoring above 50%. If you scored above 80%, you're probably in the top 5 percentile of the population. Okay? Now if you did score on the lower end... So we got 16 plus 20 plus 6 plus 40. ...long journey of preparedness ahead of you. Hopefully this exercise helped you to identify places number? where you were deficient yeah. and places where you can actually well, make Well, that's 60, 66 plus 16. Be able to change. But the good thing 66 plus 16. Oh, that's not. Is it 72? So in conclusion, no, it's you may have financial 66 plus, plus 76. Oh, and then another 6. 82, right? Yeah. 82. Okay, so we got 82. How did you guys do? So I, I beat Canadian Prepper. You got 74, I got 82. Of course, a lot of this is just kind of subjective and you're giving yourself your own score. Let me know your score down in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. Um, and what do you think about this whole thing? I, I don't think it's a... Uh, get out of my ear, Canadian Prepper. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this whole thing? I think it's an interesting way of kind of thinking about uh, your preparedness and, and you know, you've got your little score sheet here and you can look at where your deficiencies these are and that can be your kind of to-do list like I had a five here on I think gardening and you know if it wasn't already totally obvious to me I would think well I need to up my game on gardening uh, that's something that's no surprise to me anyway but uh, I think it's useful as a way of kind of thinking about what you where your areas of improvement are so again let me know your score down in the uh, comments below thanks for watching and uh, is that it yeah yeah. And if you want to check out the father and son channel of video games uh, playing, it's down in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.